Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the Lakeshore Qualifier, checking with Team Hazmat 13201. I'm here with Audi and Trent, and Team Hazmat here, a great package machine. We'll talk about their articulating wrist and claw that they have. I'll follow up with their slides and a great turret as well, too, how they keep that all balanced. And a little more in the programming, let's talk more about this great team coming up here on Behind the Bots. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Trent, let's start out talking about this uh, awesome articulating claw that you have. Talk to me more about some of the design process, uh, any iterations through the season, and how it's been working out for your team. Yeah, so the basis of this claw is really the, we have a gearing mechanism, and this allows us to spin, oh, damn, thank you. Uh, this allows us to spin the claw to keep it parallel to the ground. Uh, out here we have, uh, these are 3D printed. We've had multiple iterations as we've changed our uh, we've noticed issues with previous designs and we'd like to modify them so we've 3D printed them which is nice and fast and we've added rubber bands for extra stickiness. Uh, moving up we have a linear slide system. Uh, this is used so that we can extend up to 40 inches from our default position and this is used for scoring on many junctions regardless of height and uh, we can get some that are pretty far away from where the chassis is parked. Uh, here is our shoulder. It is on a uh, 5 to 1 gear ratio with 223 RPM motors and it has a uh, 120 degree uh, tilt angle from all the way on the ground to that high position. And then finally we have our turret and this allows us to uh, stay in one spot on the field while rotating to pick up cones and put them on junctions. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, with how far your reach is on your robot, do you find yourself just not moving during the match sometimes? Yeah, there's a lot of times where we can get into a good cycle where we're parked on a tile and we can reach both the um, input place and the junctions. If we want, we can also go halfway across the field with the um, arm. When you guys were looking at, from a strategy standpoint, of tackling this year's game, what made you want to choose to go this route? So we decided to go for more of a um, harder route this year. We've never worked with like an articulating arm. So um, we wanted to extend out of our like 18 by 18 cube. So that made us like, we had many iterations of like extending intake or extending outtake. So we went with the, um, this, the, the best, best design, which was the extending arm. And then we want to go with like three dimensional type arm with the turret angle shoulder angle plus the wrist wrist angle over here and the arm length um, that kind of inspired us to go with the three dimensional and Adi, i gotta ask you from a uh, programming standpoint how do you keep this robot level and not tipping over you know you got so much of a, a cog difference uh, to do for something like that so how do you keep the center of gravity uh, level yeah so when we extend it um fully as we extend the arm the reduct power on the um turret is gonna keep on reducing as you extend the arm and then we also have a mech safety mechanism where if you lower the shoulder, so if you, if you lower the shoulder, as you can see, like the wrist is gonna level to the ground each time. So if you increase the shoulder, it's gonna keep on leveling. And then we have a bunch of presets for the low, middle, and high junction. So it will be easier for our drivers. And um, yeah. Last thing I, I wanna ask you guys, uh, on, on regards to the rubber bands on here, uh, seen a lot of different materials for gripping before. Rubber bands are a little new for me on this. Uh, obviously, you had to do a, a lot of testing to figure out what material to use. How did you come up with doing rubber bands for that? Um, we just kind of found some in our stockpile, to be honest. And we're like, huh. Uh, we noticed the 3D print material that was not as grippy as we thought it would be. So we figured rubber bands, you know, they're uh, fairly grippy. We figured that um, the best way to solve this solve this problem would be a simple solution of rubber bands for a more tackier grip for um, picking up the cones and dropping. 
Uh, last thing I want to ask, and either one of you can take this, is what's, uh, what's next for Hazmat? As you look into the future of this year's game, what are maybe some future improvements you want to make on your robot? Um, we probably want to make it more um, efficient on the uh, when it, safety mechanisms because still when we go to pick up when you go to pick up a cone it still t tilts a little bit so you probably want to add some couple of sensors for like better um, sensing of the junctions so it put like an auto so it senses the junction and you place it correctly every single time because since it's a uh, um, it's extending arm it won't it won't be balanced all the time so yeah. Well, Hazmat, thank you so much, uh, Team Hazmat, for uh, taking time to tell us more about your robot and your team as well, too. Of course, we wish you best of luck at this event. Can't wait to see future ones and what iterations you come up with. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gd forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.